Take my breath away. Good morning. In this film we are going to explore the respiratory and breathing system of the locust. As you will see we are going to conduct a series of experiments on Luke, our locust, to try and show how different his breathing system is to that of humans and other organisms. Here in this experiment I'm blowing carbon dioxide into Luke's test tube to enrich the ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen in the test tube. This is showing us to maintain a high concentration gradient, Luke has to breathe in and out harder. Whereas here, Luke is in an oxygenated environment and the abdominal contractions have now ceased. Unlike in humans, locusts breathe through holes in the sides of their bodies, called spiracles. Much like the stomata pores of a leaf, at the front of the body of the locust, oxygen enters at the will of Luke himself. Now we're going to perform a dissection on Luke at the area that I'm pointing at, in order to see the, resp the respiratory system of Luke for ourselves. Set of these bladders of air here, 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 here. There's kind of one per segment. And they don't operate like lungs as such. They're not actually where the gas exchange takes place, but they're like bellows. They, uh, be because of the way in which the, the muscles of the body push on them and squeeze them, they help to push the air through. So the sort of storage chambers. And you see them floating up rather nicely. There's a couple of really good floaty ones here and here. They just look like big balloons, because they're well inflated. And then buoyed under the water, they. And you can see the, the beautiful network of Key. In order to grasp Dr. Morgan's explanations, we need to look closer at Luke's tracky system through a powerful microscope. Looking at Luke's respiratory system, we can see the main trachea system, which form a wide, expansive network. The rings you may be able to see on the trachea I call, are made from chitin and are used to strengthen the trachea. Also, if you look closely, you may be able to see an air sac, which we have already talked about, or the bellow. Looking even closer, we can see now that the air, after travelling through the trachea, na uh, now runs through individual tracheals into individual cells to supply oxygen. And now finally, after oxygen exchange, CO2 needs to escape somehow. In humans, we can exhale CO2. However, in locusts or in other insects, CO2 merely passes out of even more spiracles further down the abdomen. We hope you've enjoyed watching, listening, and hopefully learning something in our crash course of the breathing and respiratory of locusts, in which, of course, none were harmed. Thank you for viewing.